Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to tell you about another useful piece of equipment for astrophotography that I have owned for a year now and I recently purchased another copy of it. I'll be talking about a flat panel for a telescope and specifically the Wanderer Astro Flat Panel version 4. What is a flat panel? How does it work? What do I think about it after a year of years? And do you need to get one? Stay with me guys as I will cover all these questions in details. Let's begin. The Wanderer Astro Flat Panel, as the name suggests, is an automated flat panel that allows you to take flats automatically at any time during an imaging session. This is how the Wanderer Astro Flat Panel looks like. Here is the flat panel itself with an LED element over there, along with two mounting arms attached to the motor responsible for the panel movements. On the motor body you can spot two ports, a USB port and a 12V power port. You need to install the flat panel on the front part of the telescope and the mounting is done using plastic zip strips. The flat panel has 255 levels of brightness to meet different needs for your flat frames. It also has a built-in heating elements with three levels of heating adjustment. As a result, the panel stays dry throughout the night or you can turn the heater on just in the morning to help the dew evaporate quicker. The dew heater is actually a really cool feature as for example my cover for 122mm APO is the previous version of this panel. It lacks the heater element, so I wait some time after sunrise to ensure that the dew is gone before closing the panel. Another feature of it is that during the daytime it acts as a lens cover which is crucial if your telescope is at a remote location and you cannot put the cap back on all the time. Now let me show you the whole process of setting up this flat panel from unboxing it to capturing your first flat frames. This is how the packaging of the flat panel looks like. Let's unbox it. So that's the flat panel itself over there in a the box. All right, nothing is there left. And what do we have here? So that's the flat panel and then we have also USB cable over there, then uh, power cable and uh, these ties uh, to mount the flat panel on the tube. In this part of the video I'm going to show you the installation process of the flat panel onto a telescope and uh, over here I got 80mm APO from SV Bonnie and uh, one of the things to consider when you're looking for a flat panel is the size. So the aperture of this scope is 80 millimeters, but the size of the dew shield is actually bigger than that. So Wanderer Astro, they offer different size of the flat panels. And when I talk to Wanderer Astro about the like appropriate size of the flat panel for this scope, uh, we kind of agreed that it would be better to use a 125 millimeter flat panel on this scope. And uh, if I kind of put it like this at the moment, I'm going to show it to you from the different angles, but you'll see that the size of the flat panel is a bit bigger than the size of the dew shield, which is with flat panel is totally fine. The purpose of the flat panel is to fully cover the tube size over here so that you can take flat flat frames appropriately and in terms of the brightness uh, this flat panel has equal brightness all over the surface of the panel itself so uh, there will be no issues with your flats but the point is that uh, you want to get the flat panel that actually fully covers the tube of the telescope and not just the aperture all right and also while like kind of uh, taking a closer look at the flat panel I want to point out that I really appreciate uh, this soft parts over here so that like when you install the flat panel of the on, the on the top of the telescope uh, it's not gonna scratch the surface of the tube which is always appreciated and uh, when installing uh, this flat panel I'm gonna use not the cable ties that came with the flat panel I'm gonna use a bit different one uh, just because the scope is under review and uh, I'm I don't own this telescope so I'm gonna set it back later but yeah, for this video I'm going to install the flat panel on this guy and uh, uh, continue working with the telescope, uh, checking out how it works, guys. So, 
let's do installation process and uh, yeah, this part of the video will be on a time-lapse mode. All right, so I'm gonna pause here for a second and I wanna show you something a bit closer. So, um, yeah. So, I installed the first cable tie over here and uh, tied it pretty good, but uh, the flat panel still moves a little, so uh, that's why I'm installing one more. What I wanted to point, show you guys is that you wanna make sure that the distance of the motor uh, is appropriate basically for your telescope. So the thing is, if I would put this motor a bit far from the end of the tube, you'll see this, what's gonna happen. Um, I don't know, yep, you're gonna see this here. Mm, I mean, I don't, yeah, you kinda can see it. So as you see this part, the flat panel not fully uh, attaches to the telescope and that's what you wanna avoid, so you wanna put the motor, this part, a bit closer to the end of the tube, like so. And as you can see now, the flat panel fully attaches to the telescope and there won't be no like additional light leaks when you take a flat frames. So that's uh, the part that you wanna uh, pay attention to when installing a flat panel. Not just this one, but basically any flat panel that uh, you install, guys. All right, so I'm going to continue with the installation. All right, so the flat panel is installed and uh, it's pretty much secured. So on the right side of the panel, I got USB port and on the left side, is power port. Now, the power port, I already have uh, extra power cable on my power box that actually I used for LED panel to take my flat frames uh, before with the telescope. I'm just going to plug this cable over there. I don't see it. Yep. So the power cable is plugged in now. Now I actually want to do it a bit differently. The cable itself. I'll do it this way. But I mean, it's just for now. I kind of don't really care about cable management at the moment because yeah, since I'll be returning the scope, everything kind of organized, but it's messy in the same way uh, at the same time, but yeah. So the power cable is connected and now let's connect a USB cable. Now for USB I'm going to use one of my cables that I already have. Uh, this is just a bit shorter in size. And uh, let's plug in USB cord over there. And the other end gonna go to my USB hub right there. Okay, and the Wi-Fi adapter over there. All right, so everything is installed. The installation process is really easy and that's how everything uh, looks like. Where's our access? Right there. All right. So yeah, that's the flat panel, the motor that's installed over there. And that's actually the part uh, where I told you about the size, guys. So yes, yeah, you can see the flat panel is bigger in size than the, this telescope. I also think that Wonder Astro, they do a 100 millimeter version, but when I was measuring the size of this dew shield, I think it's slightly more than 100 millimeters. That's the reason I uh, went with a 125 millimeter version. And yep, this is how it looks like. The other thing I want to mention about this panel is that if needed, you can slightly adjust the position of the flat panel itself, this part. So in order to do that, you need to slightly undo these four screws and uh, you can shift the panel either like upper or a bit down if needed. And uh, once uh, the position is adjusted, you can tighten 
uh, these four bolts and uh, yep <laughs> the position will be adjusted then it's not always required but uh, in case you need to slightly adjust the position uh, now you know that you can do it by undoing these screws and moving the position of the flat panel if needed in this part of the video, let's cover the software side of Wanderer flat panel. So the first thing that I did with the software is I went on Wanderer Astro website and downloaded this Wanderer Empire software to control all the stuff from Wanderer Astro like flat panels, rotators, power box. And on the same web page, you also can find firmware for uh, any of the Wanderer Astro devices. And uh, in my case, I needed this uh, firmware for uh, Wanderer cover. I needed this file in order to update firmware on the, the flat panel. So once uh, the latest firmware is installed on the flat panel, you can go to Wanderer Empire software. And the reason I started with this is just to check that everything uh, works well. So if everything works well in this app, then you can uh, say launch Nina and uh, control everything through Nina easily. That's how the interface looks like. Let's go ahead and connect to the flat panel. All right, so we connected and uh, there we have two sections uh, on this side of the app. This bottom section was used for uh, version three of Wanderer cover where you can basically set up open and close position for the flat panel. Uh, with the version four, you do it a bit differently. You just uh, type in your degree of rotation of the motor here and the, then basically you can set their open or closed position. And in my case, closed position was at 20 degrees. I didn't change that, but open position for my setup, I set it to 261 degrees. So that flat panel opens like almost fully and it's just like few moments uh, before touching the cords from the power box. So you also can control uh, two heater over there if you need to and uh, at this side you can control the flat panel brightness so if it's set to zero the flat panel is off and uh, say you set it to i don't know 50 then the flat panel will be on and as you can see on the screen it's switched from on to off position and if you want to turn it off you just set it to zero heat it and uh, yep the flat panel is off so basically that's all you need to do with this software. I just uh, close this one and uh, my deep sky imaging sessions, I control through the Nina. There, let's connect to the camera. Let's connect to the filter wheel. Uh, I don't need focuser at the moment. So mount, I don't need mount. I only need flat panel. And uh, the control of the flat panel of the Wanderer Astro flat panel goes through ASCOM driver. I have no idea to be honest why I have six options to go with but if you know guys let me know in the comment section below but i just picked the first option over there hit connect all right and once i'm connected i also have this window where i can once again set open and close position if needed and uh, uh, i can regulate the strength of the dew heater strip now in the nina software i can do pretty much uh, just opening and closing of the flat panel and uh, controlling the brightness of the panel. And uh, as you can see, if I hit open, the flat panel begins opening and uh, it's gonna stop at the position that already was set uh, over here. So basically, if you need to adjust the position, you can just, as I said, uh, type in the degree that you need and uh, you'll be all set, guys. All right, so flat panel is open now and uh, let's close the flat panel just to see <laughs> that everything works fine. All right, and uh, now let me show you how the process of taking flat frames uh, is going. Now, there are two ways you can do that. And like if you use advanced sequencer, you can set it up this set up, set this process up there, or there is a tool called Flat Wizard, where basically you can uh, set up your plan for taking flat frames. Uh, you can put a name here. I, I mean, I'm not gonna go into details what each section means. So let's say I want to take 20 flat frames and 20 dark frames. All I need to do, like let's say I have a filter wheel, I need to pick a filter. The first one is UV iron cut filter. Uh, again, I, I'm gonna set it to zero. 
just for now. All right, so the maximum exposure time, I'm gonna set it to say seven seconds. The flat panel brightness, as I said earlier, you can adjust it from zero to 255. Now, uh, in most cases, you're gonna use numbers between, I'd say, one and five. If you don't use any filters or so use UV IR cut filter, if you use narrowband filters, then you might wanna go upper. But basically with the UV and IR cut filter, the brightness of one is what I need. All right, and these two histogram mean target and mean tolerance, I will keep it the same as it was. And now let's actually set flat wizard running. And as you can see, uh, the program is determining exposure time using different uh, exposures. And once the appropriate exposure time is determined, uh, the flat wizard will continue taking 20 flat frames. And then it'll give me an option either continue with the dark frames or if I don't want to take dark frames at the moment, I can take them any time later, basically. And as you can see, flat wizard capturing flats at the moment. And basically all the flat frames, they're gonna go to Unina folder, like say it's uh, July 4th. It's gonna go there, folder flat. And uh, there are basically all the flats uh, that have been captured. I mean, there are already more flats because I tried this tool before recording this part of the video, but uh, yep guys, at least uh, you're gonna have an idea of how this process uh, works. And don't look at these uh, dust spots. I need to uh, take care of some things <laughs> on the setup. All right guys, you just saw how to install the panel and get it ready. So basically that's all I wanted to cover in this brief video about the flat panel. As I mentioned earlier, I have used it for more than a year now. And to be honest, I haven't had any issues with the panel itself during all this time. Each clear night it would move to the open position and cover the telescope lens at the end of the imaging session. Since I run my imaging sessions almost remotely, the flat panel is a really useful accessory for my needs. Talking about the price, it all depends on the size of the panel. The bigger cover you need, the more it will cost. Is it worth getting a flat panel like this? Well, I think it all depends on individual situations and if you have a telescope at a remote location or looking for ways to automate things and make your astrophotography more efficient, then I think you'll definitely want to get one. At least I'm happy with my last year's purchase and I'm looking forward to using uh, this updated flat panel as well. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this panel. Uh, do you use one from Monterey Astro or you have a different brand? Share your experience and if there is any questions you have, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video until very end. I really hope to see you in the future videos and until next time, clear skies.